I'd like to share with you a story that happened about 1978. It was a prelude to a trip up Mount, Mount McKinley. It was a winter expedition. Uh, it would have been a first ascent of the east buttress on uh, Denali uh, in Alaska. <clears throat> we had been uh, vetting a team of climbers who had applied uh, to go on this expedition. It was sponsored by different uh, mountaineering companies um, who sold backpacks, sleeping bags, tents, and so forth. Uh, they were providing the gear. And anyways, uh, I was with my climbing buddy John. John Mulkern was his name. He's deceased now. Anyways, uh, we were up on uh, in the Sierras, up in the Palisade Glacier. We were, uh, it was a three or four day trip. Uh, one of the guys on the way back, um, we were vetting these guys to see who, who was a, an experienced mountaineer uh, and also who could work well with the rest of the team. Um, and John Mul Mulkern was the expedition leader and I was the lead climber. <clears throat> Anyways, one of the guys, we were coming up, following up the rear as we hiked out, or, well, we're skied out. It was just winter time, or at least very early spring. Uh, we're skiing out and uh, one of the guys is coming back up and I'm going, uh oh, something's wrong. And uh, he goes, which one of you guys has more first aid experience and uh, I told him I do and been on mountain rescue and, and uh, had advanced uh, almost paramedic training anyways uh, he says well so-and-so broke his leg I said oh great well he had tried to cross uh, some, an ice uh, section of ice uh, we're, we're around 11,500 feet almost 12,000 feet way up on this glacial moraine uh, covered by 15 20 feet of snow and we're all on uh, backcountry skis with heavy 75 pound packs that has climbing gear and ropes and carabiners and ice axes and so forth. And all our winter mountaineering equipment is very bulky. Anyways, he tried to cross this uh, frozen uh, river, basically, icefall. Uh, it, was, it was steep like this. And uh, hadn't put on his crampons, which are these spikes, steel spikes you strap on the bottom of your boots. And uh, he had tried to cross, cross carrying a 75 pound pack and slipped and, and fallen down this ice waterfall. And the uh, guy said he broke his leg. Well, it, was a, it wasn't broken, it was, a, it was a gross dislocation. Your knee normally works like this. Well, it was completely dislocated like this. As it turns out, he, he admitted to me that uh, this is like the seventh time his knee had been uh, dislocated. Uh, he had no business being up there in the back country doing these activities with a knee that loose. Anyways, <clears throat> I asked John if, you know, I, I knew that we needed to either relocate the knee, uh, splint it, put him in a sleeping bag and carry him out, or or splint it as it was, put him in a sleeping bag, you know, carry him out somehow. Uh, I didn't know which one to do. I knew it was important to do the right one. I had no idea how to relocate a knee. And I asked John if he had any clue, and he said no. And uh, so John and I had a powwow. We dismissed ourselves from these guys and knew that we needed to ask somebody who was a little bit smarter than us. So uh, we went around the corner, and uh, we knelt down in the snow, and we had a prayer by ourselves, just he and I. And uh, I offered him, I said, Heavenly Father, I said, we don't know what to do. I, I, we've, got, we've got to help this guy. Tell us what we need to do. Um, we just don't have a clue. Please help us. And uh, I closed and using the name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. And I said, Amen. I looked at John and I said, do you know what to do? And he says, no. And really, as soon as I said, Amen, I think it was John that asked me, do you know what to do? Yeah, that's right. And as soon as we said, Amen, or I said, Amen, instantly this knowledge flowed into my head. And uh, I know where it came from. It didn't come from me came from an outside source and I believe that is my Heavenly Father he answered my prayer uh, told John I, yeah I do know what to do he says great let's do it so uh, I went to, to this guy sitting in the snow and uh, I pulled out a bottle it was a prescription bottle an empty prescription bottle <laughs> that uh, actually contained a one a day vitamin in it and I pulled it out and uh, on the outside of the prescription bottle, it said, uh, I think it was Nalfon or something. I don't remember. I think it was Nalfon. It's an anti-inflammatory I'd been taking for my knees that, my, that I'd received a prescription for. 
and uh, because they've been inflamed from too much winter mountaineering and backcountry skiing with heavy packs on. <laughs> Duh. Anyways, uh, I asked him if, if he'd ever heard of Nalfon. He never had, fortunately. And he asked me what it was, and I told him it was, a, it was morphine. I, and my hand was shaking because I'm lying to him. <laughs> and I knew I needed to sell this lie to him. And I knew, I knew about the placebo effect, but this, I didn't think up this idea. It was given to me. And he says, he grabbed my wrist. He says, Scott, why are you hand, why is your hand shaking? And I said, well, I don't like giving prescription medication this, this strong to anybody, you know. I mean, I'm not a doctor. He goes, oh, I told him that it'd make him feel sleepy. He wouldn't feel any pain. And that uh, it would take about 35, 40 minutes to take effect, depending on how much he ate for breakfast, you know, several hours ago. This is about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It was going to take a good, probably five, six hours of hiking or skiing to get out and back to the vehicles. Then another six hours, well, seven hours, an hour of mountain roads maybe, and, and uh, another six hours for him to get back and to a hospital. Uh, anyways, um, he took it, and I, I told him he's going to feel uh, great, feel fantastic, feel high, warm, and comfy. And uh, after about 35 minutes, his head went back and he went, whoa, and he was stoned. He felt no pain. And uh, I knew, I took off my, my right boot and I put it basically in his crotch. And I was seated in the snow. I planted both my feet uh, securely left in the snow, right in his crotch. Two guys held on to him at a bear hug from behind. Another guy, John was, uh, another guy was behind me and holding me in a bear hug with his feet planted. And I just took his knee and I started pulling on it. And I pulled and pulled and pulled. And it took probably 40 minutes and of pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and playing this tug of war with his knee. And it slowly came in line and then it popped. And then it was straightened out and I was able to, and then we splinted it. We sent two guys out with double packs on. These packs weighed 70, 75 pounds each. Carried them all the way out to the car. About three o'clock in the morning, the next morning, we said, he saw headlamps coming back. All right. This is 12, 13 hours later. We saw the two headlights coming back. The kid got back to us and they brought back this Korean War era, or World War II probably era, stretcher that had found at an old ski lodge that had never, hadn't been in operation for years. They brought this back and we toted this guy out. We got to the cars at about sunlight, maybe eight o'clock in the morning. This is winter time, 8.30. Sunlight is coming up and uh, got this guy transported to the hospital. Uh, I wasn't there. I lived in Central California. These guys lived in Southern California. Anyways, uh, they got him there and the surgeon, the orthopedic surgeon who saw him said, who re relocated your knee? And they told the story and he says, well, it's a good thing it was relocated uh, and then splinted because if he hadn't your knee hadn't been relocated I wouldn't be giving you just a prescription an anti-inflammatory prescription and telling you get some bed rest I'd be amputating you your knee uh, your leg from the knee down there is a person smarter than you there is a power smarter than you and that's your Heavenly Father that's God and if you'll ask him for direction and help, having just a smidgen of faith, right? Faith is a hope for things which are not seen, but which are true. You can't have faith in a person. That's not the definition of faith. Faith is in Jesus Christ and in our Heavenly Father. That's the definition of faith. You can't have faith in man. That's misplaced trust, right? That's not faith. Faith means in Heavenly Father. Uh, if you ask him, he'll give you an answer. And that's the truth. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later. See you tomorrow. Bye.